But Coventry wasn't the first stained glass window Piper designed. That accolade goes to Andal School. Renchins had very successfully repaired a small window in Wantage Church for John Betjeman. John Betjeman said, well, I've got a friend called John Piper. Have you heard of him? And it was 1951, where anybody who hadn't heard of him was a complete fool. So I went to see John Piper, and I saw these amazing cartoons. They weren't fully done by that time. I saw the heads. And he gave me two heads and said, would you like to put these into glass? So I said, yes, I, I certainly will, and went back to the studio under Eddie Nutchins, whom I was working for at that time, near High Wycombe. And that was about 20 miles, I suppose, from Henley, where John Piper was. I only had a Vespa, and I made these heads in glass and had to put them between my knees, held close together, and drove a Vespa over the hills from uh, High Wycombe to John Piper's place, and they arrived perfectly in one piece, and um, he loved them. He thought they were absolutely excellent. And so that is really how I began with Oundle. The figures show the forms of Christ in nine different ways. Each of the figures is crowned with a golden crown, and the figures have drawn their inspiration from the works of Picasso and from the statues which adorn the portals of Bourges Cathedral and Chartres in France. Behind me, you will see the way, the truth, and the life. And Arundel's extraordinary, really. It was quite original at the time. It looks as though Picasso has visited the angels of Bourges, and they both got on very well together. And uh, that was a fairly accurate description of what it was, but the colouring was beautiful. Above the figure, the central figure of Christ, is the tracery that leads up to the top of the window. And in that, you will see a jumbled thorn bush. And the central figure of each of the Piper lights is a green man or foliate head. And the tendrils lead up from the figure to the crown of thorns and to the thorn bush as the symbol of the passion. An empty stage. We've had busy Brighton seaside streets, devoid of people. Renishaw, Windsor, and bombed out Coventry, peopleless. And here, finally, we have figures but they're statues, emotionless. I think that is a sort of thing that his inspiration, of course, coming from many a green man and mask on a church roof or church carving. In this, Piper was greatly influenced by a book on double-headed roof bosses in cathedrals by Charles Cave. I think there is this idea that they are not portraying human emotion. These windows here are particularly are transcendent. These faces, you are not going to stare them down. They are looking at you. Now, I think in many ways I'd call them icons. They're an extraordinary subtle combination of a medieval feeling for a window and the substance of modern art. And, and this is something that nobody has ever done before or since. And this is quite unique to John Piper's work, I think. 